an exciting day because we have two programs, one virtual, and then uh, we have an in-person event as well. You'll be getting another email with all the details regarding that this afternoon, but that is our social hour. Uh, there's no real agenda. It's just uh, coming out, coming together, and joining us at arguably one of the coolest locations in the city of Detroit. It's the, called The Skip. It's in an alleyway filled with world-renowned art, and murals and um, a really cool bar called The Skip. So all of those details will be coming this afternoon, but we hope that you will join us. If you're downtown or near there, please join us for um, a cocktail or a mocktail. You do not have to be 21 uh, to join us. It will be a good time. So hopefully we will see you all this afternoon from five to seven. That's where we will be in person. This morning, however, I'm very excited about our conversation. And before we get into the boardroom, uh, I just run a couple clean house items as we always do. One, if you don't get our newsletters, please sign up. We, uh, you can access all of our information, our digital handbook via that newsletter and our website. Uh, I'm sure Carrie can help throw our website in there if you have not already checked it out. All of the videos from our past programming will be or are available up there. We're pretty quick to, to churn those out. So check out the website for videos from past um, programming and what's to come. We have officially one week left of virtual programming and uh, one week and one day left of the, the 2022 program. So uh, we'll get more into all of that but uh, I am excited to get going on this conversation. So before we do, we always wanna give love and, and I'm gonna give uh, a, a quick synopsis of our conversation today because so our, our biggest supporter for this program is Delta Dental of Michigan. They come in as our presenting sponsor every year. We are so incredibly grateful for them. Um, simply put, we would not be here without their support and participation. Um, and so for that, I want to give them a little shout out via their uh, a 30 second clip. And then Gorin is the CEO, the head honcho of Delta Dental. So we're gonna get into who they are, what they do, what they do in the community um, and why you should, they should be on your radar for all things. So let's share this real quick. And before we really dive in, one more uh, thing I want to point out, if you are joining us from MSU, uh, I do have your QR code. And as always, that will be shared in Q the Q&A portion at the end of the program. So stay tuned for that. I got you covered. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's get into this. Uh, this is my third year hosting this conversation with Gorn, and I am excited. Every year we have a great, very candid conversation, and I appreciate that. But I want to introduce Gorn Jerkovic, who is the CEO, uh, President and CEO of Delta Dental of Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. Thank you again for joining us, and thank you for your continued support of our program. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Happy to Happy to be here with you again for, as you mentioned, the third year, and we are excited as always to be a sponsor of the program. I appreciate that. Uh, I always love taking it back. A lot of our, our uh, viewers and our participants are college students or recent graduates. So I like to take it way back and I should say way back, but where did you go to school and what did you study? And um, I, I just want to talk our way through basically your resume to how one becomes a CEO of a major corporation. Yeah, sure. I um, Well, every year that passes, it's further and further back. So um, that's all. Kind of dis disheartening in one way, but I guess it's getting closer maybe to the, to the end goal of retirement. So um, so um, yeah, I started, so I'm, I'm born and raised in, in Lansing, Michigan. I went to Michigan State, <clears throat> studied uh, accounting, 
and I honestly did so. It's one of those things where I wasn't sure what I was going to do in college. And my brother was three years older than I was. And he went to Michigan State, uh, was an accounting major. And so kind of by default, I kind of just followed in his footsteps and, and I enjoyed the classes. So it was of, of interest to me. I know it's not accounting is not for everybody. Um, and I understand that. Um, me so, uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's that was kind of my path in, in college. Um, and, you know, kind of participated in, in all the different, um, you know, whether it was academic or social clubs and, and that kind of thing, which, which my, you know, my college experience was great. Um, and I did a couple of internships uh, when I was in college with local accounting firms uh, in the area, which was great, uh, provided me, you know, kind of solidified the fact of, yes, this is what I want to do. And, and, and for me, it was great because the folks that I worked with during those years were, you know, had like a vested interest in me. I wasn't just kind of somebody coming in and, and knocking out some work and, and then going back to school. So, so um, my experience as an intern was, was wonderful, mainly because of the people that I worked with and for. Um, so after, um, after I was done with college and, and kind of went through the, the job fairs and the job recruiting, um, I, I settled on public accounting versus uh, corporate accounting um, and worked at Plant Moran um, out of school, uh, again, here in East Lansing at their office here. Uh, I was there for about six and a half years. And, and knowing what I knew, especially, again, I had my brother to kind of bounce things uh, against. And, and, you know, I kind of made the decision that uh, public accounting long term wasn't the, the right place for me. So I wanted to move into the corporate setting. And, um, and Delta Dental was a client of, of ours and just kind of working through relationships, uh, got a job here, um, you know, got a job directly in management here, which was, which was interesting for me because I was 29 years old and everybody in my department was older than I was. So managing that way was, was definitely a challenge. I mean, I had, and I had people that were 35 up to 55. So um, that in and of itself was a challenge, but I love the organization. Um, you know, 23 years I've been here and it's changed a lot. Um, but I also feel fortunate that I, you know, I had two jobs. I've had two jobs in my entire post-college career and they've been for outstanding organizations. So I feel very lucky and blessed in that way. Um, and, you know, here at Delta, I don't know that I walked in thinking that CEO was my ultimate goal. But I think it was more about what the organization was and kind of what it represented that really kind of hooked me and, and just kind of working my way through um, kind of the ranks in management and then got to executive management and then ultimately um, was fortunate enough to, to get the role of, of president and CEO. I've been in this seat for, it'll be four years at the end of the year here. And I have loved every minute of it. Uh, COVID has provided a big challenge in the middle of that whole process. So um, I feel like my entire, almost entire tenure as CEO has been during COVID, um, yeah. but 23 years here at Delta and I couldn't be happier with my career choice. I mean, that's a great segue into who Delta Dental is and why, you know, that, that in itself is a huge, portion of my question, but it, another very important portion of that is why the, a, a program like this, talent, is so important to you guys. Why, why do you support and put so, inve so much investment, um, not only to talent, but then also um, you guys do so much within your community? So I know that's a very loaded question. Let's start with who Delta Dental is and then your, your true commitment to making your community vibrant. Yeah. So, you know, at, at its core, um, Delta Dental is it's a dental, dental benefits company, insurance company. We provide uh, dental benefits to uh, mainly groups. Um, um, so customers, uh, businesses around the states of Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. It is a national brand, so it covers the entire country. But um, here in Michigan, we headquarter three different states, Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. Um, and again, providing dental benefits um, to customers of all sizes, you know, it could be five employees all the way up to 500,000 employees. Um, so we have a pretty wide breadth of customers. We also do dental benefits for individuals. We have recently uh, implemented a vision product. So we do vision insurance as well. 
And I say all this knowing that everybody on online is probably thinking insurance. Eh, I don't know about insurance, maybe a little bit on the boring side, but I will say this, it is insurance, but there's, you know, so many different aspects and avenues in relation to our organization and, and a lot of the other insurance companies. I think there's, you know, it might get a bad rap as kind of not a sexy industry, but there is a lot of cool things, um, you know, whether it's technology based, whether it's, um, you know, the things that we do, and we can talk a little bit more about kind of our, our mission and, and what we do in our community. And, and I would also tell you, you know, when you go through some of these job fairs or, or interviews, you know, dig deep into the company, because you might look at us and say, oh, it's a dental insurance company in Michigan. But if our portfolio of companies, we have 38 different companies at Delta Dental, and they do a variety of things. Um, insurance, obviously, is the core. But you know, we have companies that are in private equity, venture capital, um, kind of the, the cutting edge of, of certain, you know, technologies and, and industries. So, um, you know, we have a lot kind of going on for us. Um, but, you know, at its core, we are a dental benefits uh, insurance company. And, and we're very, you know, proud of that fact. Um, but a lot of opportunities and a lot of different things that we do. Yeah. And I mean, as you mentioned, as you look at these different companies, see the different layers, you know, we talk about that every year. It's just, it's not just a dental insurance. Um, there are so many different layers. There are so many different opportunities, as you said, the different businesses involved, but there's, and that's something to think about for all companies. There's a role at, at, at these big companies, there's a role for almost everyone. You know, when we, we work closely with your community benefits program, your partnerships, um, Margaret Trimmer, my favorite, um, you know, that's, th there's so many different types of jobs at each company, but you pointed out another major um, component to corporate being, and, and that I think is very important to this demographic, and that is your community involvement and how you are involved, how you give back, how you support. And I think you guys do an incredible job. Um, we are incredibly proud to be partnered with you because we see Delta Dental all over and in many ways and facets of you giving back to your community. And I think that's important. I would guess and uh, uh, no to your, your employee employees, but then also to the, uh, the interns and the um, potential employees looking at Delta Dental. So can you talk a little bit about why that's such a core value to your company um, and some of the things that you do do? Yeah, and I think it all kind of stems from, you know, our strategic plan and our mission and our vision as an organization. Um, you know, obviously we deliver benefits um, or dental benefits to a, a huge population of, of people, again, whether it's through um, companies or whether it's directly to the individual. But, but I think, you know, what's, when I look at like a career, where do I want to be? You know, again, it, it, it isn't a coincidence that I've been here for 23 years. It, it's purposeful. You know, I, I kind of look at the organization and the way that we've been able to shape the organization to be, you know, kind of a force for good. You know, that's kind of how we view ourselves. Um, so we, we have a lot of involvement, you know, wh whether it's in one of our cores is, is the underserved. You know, there are a lot of individuals in our space um, that need oral health care and have no way to get it. Um, so we have a lot of different avenues and a lot of different programs that we, you know, put at the forefront of who we are to make sure that, that those individuals have, have that opportunity and that chance. Um, but we also know that just being a good corporate um, entity, there's a lot of other things, you know, we, we try to make sure when we look to give back, when we look to participate, you know, we want to make sure that we're doing that where our customers are, where our employees are, you know, all of our stakeholders, um, because we want to be partners with them. Um, and, and again, I think, especially probably for, for this generation and, and for the younger folks, right, kind of being connected to that purpose you know, it means a lot to me, but I think it probably especially does um, just for what I know about this generation. I have, I have a son that is a, an intern right now and a freshman in college. So um, I, I know kind of where, where his mindset is at. And, and I think for us, um, you know, the leaders of organizations, we have to understand that. And, and for, for Delta Dental, when we look at our strategic plan and what kind of drives us, um, talent management, talent acquisition is a huge component of that. Um, and, and also, 
um, you know, the, the, the giving back that is also embedded right into our, our strategic plan. And we don't do it because it's going to bring customers or revenue or, or bottom line. We do it because it's the right thing. And we're, we're fortunate enough to be able to do it. So, you know, I, I think we've done a good job collectively as an organization to kind of tie all of our components together and be able to support the community and be a successful business. And, and I think that gives purpose to the employees and especially the more we can kind of drive that into our younger employees um, so they can carry the baton for, you know, we've been around 65 years or so, and, and we obviously want to be around for another 65. So making sure that all of our employees understand that uh, is, is huge for us. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it's a, a something that they all look for or should. Uh, and speaking of, so for those of you joining us that joined us, maybe it was last week with Courtney Bame uh, from MSU FCU. She joined us talking about compensation, benefits, retirement, all that, that stuff, all those important components that make up your um, overall offer. You know, it's not just the salary. So actually, as you were talking, I, I was thinking about that in... Um, you know, when you're explaining what you do and, and at the core, you're a dental insurance. Uh, and that it just reminded me to connect the dots in terms of if you are looking at a company and, and looking at the benefits, this is part of that. Your teeth, I mean, and you, you know this, you can tell us the stat and like how important your mouth and your teeth is to your overall health. Um, so just, I just wanted to connect those dots that that is part of that benefits package, the overall offer that we were talking about that you will receive from companies and dental insurance, you know, keep it that in mind that it's, it's in there, what it means, what it offers, um, you know, it just, and, and if you'd like to expand on that, uh, I know a lot of the companies, uh, include dental insurance, but it yeah. is something to look at and, and consider as part of the overall package. Yeah, it's, it's typically the, the second most sought after benefit, obviously after health insurance. Um, and, and a shout out to MSU FCU, they're a customer of ours, so yeah. love to see them part of the program. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, kind of looking at, at the total package like that, that employers offer, you know, I, I think there's, there's, kind of the table stakes, which I think are benefits. Um, and, and I think having a full suite of them is very important. Um, maybe not something that people kind of think about at, at, a, at a young age, right? They're kind of always on their parents' insurance and not really thing that they think about, but ultimately, right? right. It's an expensive endeavor um, to get healthcare in a variety of different ways. So um, I, I think if you can find a good stable company that offers a solid package with, with health, dental, vision, um, and then, you know, there's other things like 401k matching where you've got a little bit of control, um, you know, from an investment perspective into your retirement. I think those are always good things. Tuition reimbursement, um, if you want to continue, which we, you know, we, we definitely um, encourage, um, you know, if people want to continue their education um, and, and obviously it helps us. Um, from a skill perspective, you know, kind of keeping skills sharp and, uh, and expanding them. So, yeah, I think a, a, a robust benefit package is, is a definite plus. Um, and, and depending on what industry and, and, you know, how long a company's been around probably kind of dictates what they're able to offer. Um, but, you know, here at Delta, we're, we're very proud of, of our kind of comprehensive benefit package that we offer to, to new employees coming in the door. I think it's, it's, um, competitive to, at, at, at its very minimum. I think it definitely is um, kind of in the, um, in the market lead when it comes to that. Nice. Let's get, let's get back to more on the personal side of things that you have throughout your career have learned now that you're in the CEO role, what you're looking for. So one of our questions was what is uh, one of the greatest trait or attribute that you look for when hiring, or as you are watching the interns, you know, what, what are you noticing and what do you look for in your hires and your staff? Yeah. And, and I, I've been so, you know, we've got, oh boy, I think we've got 40 ish interns here at Delta currently somewhere in that number. Nice. And, and we just had a, a, a little event here with them 
uh, last couple of days, just just with our some of our executive team, just just kind of a chat for an hour, and and I, and I've run across them in, in the building as well. And and I think the thing that gives me kind of the most I don't know hope is probably not the best word, but um, you know their ability to just be a you know to just have a conversation to just kind of ask a question. Um, you know, I, I am I am so happy to you know have an intern or a young staff person walk by my office and and pop in and have a chat for 15, 20 minutes. Um, I, I think you know when I look at what 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 skills or or kind of what things that that um, you know probably kind of breed success from from an early um, uh, employee uh, perspective, I, I, I kind of look at the you know whether it's curiosity, whether it's the ability to you know, ask a question, you know, question something and, and, and have that, um, kind of have that, um, and which is hard as a, as a 23 year old, you know, walking into a, a, a sizable corporation like us is, is to kind of, to be able to kind of stand and think for themselves and, and, and want to, you know, I, if I can find somebody who wants to, to learn, who wants to be connected to the company, who wants to understand the mission, the purpose, the strategy, why we do what we do, you know, I, for me, that is a big thing. Like I, I want the, I want the employee to connect to the company and, 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 and honestly put the company first, right? I know you're in charge of your, of your, um, you know, your career. And, and I think if you can find a company that's helped pushing you along to give you the opportunities, but I would say to a lot of people, I think if you, if you really focus on the company and the success of the organization, that's going to pull everybody along with it. And, and I think we've seen that here at Delta. You know, I look at kind of what we were 23 years ago when I was here, the number of, of you know, higher level staff, executive staff, you know, that's grown, um, that's grown immensely. And a lot of it just has to do with the success of the organization. So I think if you have a vested interest in the organization, understand its purpose and really want to be here for the right reason here or anywhere else, I think that really can help drive. I think people see that um, in younger talent uh, and, and, and I would hope that they would grab onto them and try to help shepherd them through hopefully a successful career in an organization. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, you know, these, these in-person happenstance sometimes, or they seek out um, opportunity to walk by your office and, and pop in. In a day and age where some a lot more is going virtual, or you're sitting in a space where you cover three states, and so someone might be in Ohio and you're sitting in Michigan, how might you suggest these students take advantage of their time there, either to, you know, in person, it's easier to find the, the opportunities to stop in, but if they are virtual or if they are in a different state, any suggestions on how they can make themselves known in a good way or um, make that connection a little bit stronger with leadership like yourself? Yeah, I, I, that is a challenge. I, I, uh, that is something that I struggle with, to be honest with you. You know, we've, I, I think one of these um, um, virtual experiences that we did carry a couple of years ago, right, was at the height of, of the pandemic and everybody, students and um, employees were virtual, and and I think that's a challenge. You know, I, I know, I know for a period of time we had people onboarding here that never stepped foot in the organization, that never had the ability to get a tour to meet some people, and and I think that's a hard thing. Um, you know, I think a lot of that probably is dependent on the people that you work with and work for, right? You need some help as a young 23, 24, 25 year old in an organization especially if it's virtual, um, it's probably, there's a feeling of a bit of floundering around because you don't, you don't have that connection to be able to kind of get one-on-one -on -one face to face communication or feedback. And, and so I think employees have to be a little bit more in charge of their, of their own career and their own path in a way that they, they're gonna have to speak up. They're gonna have to get time on people's calendars or, or you know, on, on Zoom or Teams or whatever virtual, um, you know, and, and we're, we're struggling with that a little bit too uh, at Delta. We still, the majority of our folks are virtual. And I think that there's a gap there. I think the connection to the organization is harder when, when it's a virtual um, um, environment. So I think anything that we can do and whether they're touch points, 
whether they're coming to the office once every couple of weeks to have a, a full team meeting or a full um, department meeting. Um, I, I think all of those help. I think those are the things that need to happen to make sure that there is a connection um, with, with people and with the organization. Otherwise, I think it, it really kind of gets difficult to be able to, to have those connections and, and have that you know, kind of face-to-face -face feedback and, and communication. Yeah, I think that's a valid point. I mean, maybe some someone that has been there a little more senior or has been there for several years already feels that connection. But if you're coming in new and, and those those folks might enjoy the virtual component, um, whereas someone new, it's it just makes it a little bit harder to, to connect with everyone. You had mentioned something earlier in your, your career about working with um, like being the youngest and working with teams that were a um, little bit more old, older or senior than you. How can you talk a little bit about that and some suggestions, um, advice of, you know, obviously they are the majority of, of who's on here are coming in uh, very green, very new to their environment, the work environment in general. Um, how can you navigate that and but also make an impact or, you know, make an impression because a lot of them are also trying to get jobs, job sure. opportunities afterwards. Yeah, I, I would say, um, you know, it's easier said than done. I, I understand that. But I, I would tell, you know, don't worry too much when you come walking in the door. You know, people understand, you know, they were in your shoes at one point in time. They've got kids in your shoes. So I think people understand, you know, the, the, the younger or the newer employees coming in. And, and, and especially now, I think there's been a huge shift over the past, I don't know, five plus years when it comes to, you know, we, we're doing more of the seeking out of the talent versus maybe the talent coming and knocking on our door, right? I think there is a, you know, what if you want to call it a war for talent, if you want to call it just kind of a, a um, every, everything, you know, people are dealing with as far as, as, as a competition for, for talent. So I know, so when we look at it from our perspective, right, we know that, yeah, we have a great name, a great product, but at the end of the day, it's the employees that, that, to drive it for us, right? If we don't have a, a good um, a good infrastructure of employees, there's no way we're going to be successful. So in order to continue that to go, we know that we have to do things out in the marketplace to make sure that we are attractive. And we've talked about a lot of them already on this call. Um, but but I, I think, you know, I, I think those are questions that are, are totally fair game in an interview. You know, what, what does my career path look like? What are some of the tools and skills that that others are going to help and provide to me to make sure that I have a successful, you know, situation at, at my employer. Um, I I would I would hate for somebody to walk in the door, you know, and just be completely clueless about, you know, what they do, what the purpose is, the why, how do I connect? I mean, those things I think are are fair game and interview questions. I think they should be asked, um, and I think employers are expecting them. You know, I I, I want somebody. Who wants to know what what Delta Dental's vested interest is in them? Like, what? Why do I want them here? And and what you know? What can I do to help them have a successful uh, career at Delta Dental? And the last thing we want to do is have failure and turnover. That doesn't do us or the employee any good. So, you know, I think it is it's certainly in my mind a partnership. Um, I want to see the employee, you know, ha have a lot of vested interest as well as as we'll do the same. So. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, mentoring programs, things like that, that, that companies put in place, I think those are great. Um, you know, I think we have to take the time to make sure it's easy to get, it's easy to get too busy and not be able to allocate enough time for development and advancement. Um, and, I, and I think that's, you know, sometimes where, where companies kind of miss out on that opportunity to really be vested with their employees. Okay, so you mentioned you had a son who is a freshman and starting an internship too. What were two yep. pieces of advice you gave him as he walked into his interview? Or, you know, I'm I, sorry, his internship or his interview? Yeah, I, I, a couple of things that I kind of always say to, to is, is obviously ask questions. And, and you know, and if, if you're lucky enough to have the, the internship or be a part of an organization, um, you know, I, I kind of... And I think this is something that the organization also has responsibility to. To me, you have to give the, in the intern or the young employee an experience to be able to connect and, and talk to people. You know, I, I, I told 
I told him and I've told others that I've talked to, you know, friends with kids, you know, especially if you're going to be a Delta Dental with an internship, like talk, talk to people who have experiences so you can kind of glean the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, what, what, what they did in their career that helped them, what, what things went wrong. Cause there were things that I'm sure didn't go their way or, you know, things that you had to kind of navigate around, you know, I, I would say in my experience, you know, I, I was fortunate enough that I worked with a lot of people that had very good qualities, but I've also ran into people that I felt like didn't. And, and to me, it was also a don't act like that person because I don't think it's going to, you know, end well for you. So, you know, I, I think you gotta, you gotta be kind of wide eyed, soak it all in. Um, but if you have the ability to kind of sit down with a few people during your internship and just kind of dig into their brain and their experiences like we're doing today, I think it's invaluable. I think you can learn a lot um, that'll help you kind of navigate whatever career path that you choose. What's one thing that went wrong in your career or that you well, have to navigate? Yeah, you know, again, I've been fortunate enough with the organizations that I've worked for, but, you know, there have been um, people kind of up the chain from, from me that, that I didn't particularly think was the right kind of path to follow. And I kind of skirted away from, from them. And, um, you know, we, we, uh, we, especially here, we kind of, and I'll keep it PG, but we kind of have the no jerk rule here. Like we don't, we don't allow that, you know, we will, we will usher you into a new career. Um, if you don't fit well, and if you don't have kind of the same, morals and ethics that we do. Um, and, and we have a team assembled here that I think is very reflective of that. Um, so, you know, I, I think again, pick up the good things from the good people, but you're gonna run into, you know, a sour apple here and there along your career. And I think as long as you kind of are able to identify that, um, I think it'll be, again, helpful. I've, I've run into that in my career a couple of times and, you know, luckily I've made the, the right path as far as which direction to go. Yeah. Uh, we actually, Margaret Trimmer joined us. Our first, our kickoff uh, program, she talked about mentorship and she mentioned that. She said, make sure you're hitching your wheel to the, to the right horse, right? You know, it's like, make sure uh, you're learning from the right person or take the good and, and you know, recognize the bad. Uh, so that is valid advice and I appreciate that. Um, you also mentioned ask questions in their interview. So I just thought, what, what is the best question you've received in an interview? So you're the interviewee or you're in an interview and someone has asked a question back to you as the employer. Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, or what would be a good one? Like just we always say, come with questions, come with questions. Well, and there are some standard and we had a whole interview, um, the art of interview yesterday. If you missed that, um, you can uh, listen to that video, but just curious if you've ever heard one where you're like, hmm, that was a good, that that caught me off or yeah, in, in a good know, way. I think, yeah, and maybe not a specific question, but I think the, um, I think that for me, I, I liked questions that, that really talked about, <clears throat> you know, asking questions about the organization, because at the end of the day, right, I think if you're going to look for a career, there's got to be a connection between what, what the organization is about, and then does that match up with kind of your career, and, and I get it for, for people, you know, at an early age, they might not have kind of their path kind of spelled out or, or really have an understanding, but I, I think asking questions about the organization to really kind of figure out whether it's the right fit or the best fit for what you want to accomplish as an individual, um, I don't have necessarily a question that I can kind of think off of the top of my head that that kind of wowed me or kind of set me back. But um, I think to me, the questions that are curious about the organization and what it does and, and the good it does. And then also the questions about, you know, um, you know, career path for the individual, like, you know, what does success look like for me as an individual in the position that I'm in, right? What are my opportunities? I think those are all valid, fair questions because I, I again, I, I, would, I would put a lot of time and invested um, resources into, you know, employees and, and new employees coming in. You know, if I knew what their goals and aspirations were and if I could match them up with what the company's doing, I think 
to me, again, I'm all about the success of the company and the success of the individual. And if I know that information, I think I can kind of put a pretty good path together. And, 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 and here at Delta, and I mentioned all the different companies we have, which again, provides us opportunities where you might get into, yep, you might work for Delta Dental and then decide after 18 months that, you know, maybe this specific path right here isn't the best for me, but I love what you're doing at the 4100 group, which is a subsidiary that is in venture capital. And, and so we may be ha able to have kind of varying paths for people to kind of go through, dabble in different kind of locations and different spots. We've got different, you know, um, different locations throughout the, the, the country. So we can provide different opportunities for employees. And, and I think those, again, are things that, you know, I, I want to hear the kind of the curiosity of an employee and, and what they want to kind of get out of their, their career. And I'll do everything I can to match that up with what we have available. Yeah. Speaking of curiosity, I always want to hear your questions. We have, I've been sprinkling in several of the questions we got from registrations. We always appreciate those, but please put your questions into the chat. Uh, I will be happy to moderate those and you can send them directly to myself or to everyone so that I can see those and get those in front of Gorn. But um, another, another question I have is, um, you know, we always hear about this work-life balance and uh, just curious if you have any advice as they're starting, you know, when you're starting, you're, you, you're eager to, to work and learn and uh, how do you moderate that or how do you, um, how, how do you create a healthy lifestyle for a career, you know, a, a long-term career? Yeah, I am, um, you know, just kind of learning through. So I'm 51. I've been obviously here at Delta for 23 years. And, and early on in my career at Delta, you know, it was kind of like 24 seven, whatever I could do right. and work and kind of, and, and, and yeah, that's got its benefits, right? But it's also got a lot of negative too, right? I, I think work-life balance, especially now in this day and age is, is huge. Um, and and I, I'm sure there's studies done as far as from a you know, freshness perspective and how an employee feels kind of coming to work. And, and if there isn't a detachment, you know, it's like, uh, you know, just talking to some students when, when they were virtual, whether it was high school or college, right? They didn't know when the day ended or when it started. It was, they yeah. felt like they rolled out of bed and they were in school. And so I, I, I don't think that that's healthy in any way, shape or form. I think companies can help drive that with, you know, again, benefit packages, whether it be, you know, PTO or time off or vacation or opportunities, you know, we provide our employees a lot of opportunities to volunteer, you know, to get involved in something that's that's kind of outside, obviously working within the four walls of Delta Dental. And that may still be connected to Delta, but it also kind of gives them another avenue by which to, you know, do something good in the community that maybe they wouldn't have had the opportunity just looking, you know, looking for something like that themselves and not through kind of our company sponsorship. So I, I feel like I've gotten a lot better in the work-life balance um, perspective, obviously having kids and things like that, you know, in a way kind of forces you to do that. But whether you have kids or whether you're 25 or whether you're 50, I mean, I think that is a, a, it is a big thing. And for me, I think I get a lot more out of an employee if they've got a good work-life balance, they're fresh coming in, you know, it's not a 24 seven thing that they think about Delta. I don't think that that's healthy. Um, but, you know, depending on your position and where you're at, you know, you may have to spend a few more hours a week, um, you know, you know, from a work perspective, but I think, I think work-life balance is, is a big thing. And I think a lot of companies and most companies realize that um, and, and encourage that. And so, you know, again, I think we're going to have a, a more positive, engaged workforce if we help them find that work-life balance. Someone picked up uh, your your shift from uh, you were working uh, from in the in, I'm sorry the accounting firm yep. to then client that shift to client. Can you talk a little bit about that because I feel like that is um, an option that is a career yep. option and, and that happens often um, and how you made that jump over to Delta Dental. Yeah, and, and I think it does, especially in the world of public accounting, that, yeah. that is a, a pretty common thing. But I think in other industries as well, um, 
it, it was a little, um, it was beneficial for me because Delta was a client of, of my, of my employer at the time. So I was able to get some insight from the folks that worked with Delta Dental, just to kind of understand what kind of organization it was, um, because that's hard to do, right? When you're, you know, again, I was 28, 29 at the time to kind of do enough research and, and, you know, my relationships weren't built very wide like they are now. So my access to data, it's limited, right? I, I, I only know what I know um, and what I could get. And, you know, obviously with the internet um, and Google searches, you can get a lot more information. It's, uh, it's out there. It wasn't, you know, wasn't necessarily the same 30 years ago. Um, but um, I, I think any kind of insight that you can have and, and understanding what an organization is and is about, that's what kind of drew me to Delta. You know, I looked around at different organizations, not necessarily in the insurance uh, industry, um, but just knowing what that I could kind of glean from, from, my, from my teammates and, and understanding what they knew of the organization, it was definitely near the top of my list um, to try to get into. And it just obviously worked out for me. But, you know, I, I, would, I would tell people, and, and again, I think this applies whether you're an employee or whether you're looking for a job, like take advantage of any relationship that you have, whether it's through your parent, whether it's through an employer, whether it's through, you know, the community, whatever it is, like take advantage of those relationships because you'll get a lot of information that you probably wouldn't be able to get otherwise, which might help, again, drive you to, you know, where you might end up from, a, from an employment perspective. So, um, and I, I think Margaret's on the phone or on the, on the call. And, and I know, you know, she's, she's kind of in charge of our relationships and, and um, connects us with a lot of wonderful people. And, and I would just, again, say any relationship that you have or that you have the ability to reach out to, to try to cultivate one, do so because it'll open doors for you. Um, and, and, you know, you might not have to kind of grind so hard, but so I guess that would be my little tidbit of advice. I like it. Max is interested in how COVID has affected uh, the dental practices, uh, but also your business overall. But then also, how do you see what has happened throughout COVID, how that might impact your business moving forward? Yeah, so it impacted our business greatly because especially being in healthcare. And, and as all of you, I'm sure, have been to the dentist, you realize that is a close quarters engagement with your dentist, right? So when COVID happens and, and you know, everything wasn't known about COVID, doctor's office shut down, dental offices shut down, and, and a lot of them in Michigan shut down for, you know, 45 or 60 days, which was a long period of time, which when you're in the practice of providing dental benefits and those offices are closed, that's a huge challenge. But, you know, we kind of made sure first and foremost, we took care of our employees. That was number one, right? We knew that there might be a situation where they would not be able to come to work. They wouldn't have remote access, but we made sure we took it. We took care of them. They didn't miss a paycheck. They didn't miss any of their benefits. So, you know, that was kind of first and foremost, along with how do we engage with, you know, whether it's public office leaders um, to ensure the understanding that, that the delivery of dental benefits is safe in this environment. You know, the dental industry has dealt with a lot of things, a lot of epidemics, and they've been able to, to, to navigate those. So the other thing that we did during, during COVID, we knew that people couldn't go to the dentist um, because of them, of them being closed. So we worked with our customers, agents and brokers that, that kind of sell our product and, and made sure that they understood that we knew that, you know, we, that, that there was a gap there. And, and we took care of our customers and our dentists and our agents and brokers because we knew that this wasn't something that was in anybody's control. Um, so we try to have as much business continuity as possible that they wouldn't be impacted by this. Um, so I was very happy and, and about how we dealt with that. You know, I think the other thing that's come out of this, and, and again, for me being at the age that I am, and, and it, it was interesting to me how how quickly, and I say quickly, it's a two-year span, how everything went to remote and then stayed there, even though kind of the world restarted and people are going to concerts and sporting events and doing everything, but the remote aspect of work is still there. And um, so that, that's been a big navigation for us. Um, I, I don't think that, I think that's going to continue in some shape or form. I don't know that that's going to be 100% remote. Um, 
and, and part of that for me, again, I'm, I'm looking at the organization and, and from a long-term perspective, strategically, how do we ensure success? And, and I think a completely remote workforce, in my opinion, you know, provides benefits and challenges. Um, and I think some of those challenges are, again, I, I go back to the connection to the organization, you know, the loyalty of the organization on both sides, right? If I don't, if I don't see you and don't know you, it's hard for me to be loyal to you, kind of the same way of you as an employee to the organization. So I think there is a connection that has to happen. And, and we talked a little bit about ways to potentially make that happen, but I think, you know, organizations struggle with that. And so I think there's a balance there somewhere, um, you know, again, whether it's work life or whether it's remote or in the office, I think there are balances there. Um, you know, we're still working through those, um, trying to find what the right, what, what, what looks the best for Delta and feels the best. And, you know, we haven't found, we haven't kind of polished that yet. We're still working on that. Um, but I, I think remote work is, is here to stay. Um, you know, I, I, I worry a little bit about the fact that, you know, you can have companies in California and wherever kind of, you know, looking at talent here in Michigan. And, and my worry is for the employee, if there's no connection between the employee and the organization, I worry when things may have a downturn in the economy that we're seeing now, you know, those employees may be the first ones to potentially lose their job, get let go, because there isn't that connection, there isn't that vested interest yeah. necessarily. So I, you know, I, I do have a, I do have some worry about that, you know, in the remote environment. I think it's got its benefits, but I also think it has some some negative negative connotations around it. Yeah. Mary, and, and I love this because I do know how much you guys do in the community. I mean, you've done everything from build houses to you have uh, a, a van. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but that goes into um, communities. But her, her question is, what's your favorite activation that you, uh, either you personally or as a company, have done in the community? Yeah, a couple of things. I think at, at a general high level, like bringing bringing health care to the underserved the people that can't um that, that don't receive it because either it doesn't come through an employer or or whatever the case may be i think actually helping the health care of people that don't have the ability to access it is is my number one um you know it's, it's right in line with our mission we have a foundation that focuses on that as well you mentioned a van we've got a giant giant bus for lack of a better term a mobile unit that's got multiple kind of dental rooms in it that we can go park somewhere and deliver um, oral health care um, to individuals. Um, so that, that I would say is number one um, that's tied specifically to Delta. The other things that, that I think that we've done that are, that I think are pretty cool. One of them is, is and Margaret's kind of leading this. And, and I think especially in the last 24 or 36 months, you know, we sponsor this, the civility program where, you know, people from all different, races, creeds, whatever it may be, political views, um, you know, it's very easy behind the guise of social media, whatever it is, to, to just kind of fire out and lash out and not have a really thoughtful conversation. And so we've sponsored some programs around civility to kind of get people of varying backgrounds together and really understand what each other's about. And, and I think the great thing that comes from that for me is usually the result is we're not very different. We may have some different views, and if we talk through them, I think we can be respectful and understand our views and, and kind of respect each other at the end of the day. Um, so that, that, I, that to me has been a very big um, program that we've done. And then we also do a lot of things in, around kids. Um, you, know, you know, a lot of kids obviously have, um, you know, from a, from a perspective of whether it be school supplies or whether it be food to, to tie, tie them over for the weekend, that a lot of them obviously have food insecurities. We have a lot of things around around kids and and not just around oral health, but just kind of their overall health and and well being. So you know that's that's kind of a near and dear place in in all of our hearts here at Delta Dental. And as a mom of three little ones, I'm personally very excited about the playground that is to come on the Detroit yep. Riverfront. Uh, you guys are pouring huge investment into that, uh, making that part of the community for everyone to enjoy and have free access to. So I'm very excited about that one. Yeah, that's that's one of our flagship um, kind of projects that we put in place. And again, obviously it brings, brings a space to where people can, 
enjoy themselves, play giant playground, giant play garden. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. But I think the other thing for us that we can also kind of activate that space with different programs, yeah. health related kind of, you know, to make it, uh, to make it kind of dual purpose. So that's obviously very exciting for us. Yeah. See, I told you they're everywhere. They're doing so many things. So uh, I, I'm going to, I want to be conscious of everyone's time. And I love this. I've waited, Muhammad, thank you for this question. I have waited to, to the last one to, to ask this, but because um, it just tees up and, and closes us out perfectly. He wants to know what kind of internships do you guys have to offer? Yeah, you know, I think um, it's one of those things where most all of our departments have the have the ability and the authority to have to have interns. Um, I mentioned we've got a pretty robust class of interns this year. Um, just met with them. Um, gosh, I kind of lose track of my days. I think it was yesterday, the day before. Um, you know, we're, we are a big, we have a big IT um, staff here at Delta. We do a lot of programming, a lot of development. So we have, I know in that space, data security, data science, data analytics, programming, developing, you know, those are all I know that we've had interns either currently or in past years um, related to that. Um, I, I know in our legal and compliance area, you know, for those aspiring lawyers, um, we have the ability for them to participate in, in different programs. Um, Margaret's area, um, again, communications, um, culture, public affairs, um, you know, getting people out into the community. So we've, we've got, I would say, a pretty wide, um, robust program um, kind of covering, and, and some of our other companies, the, the non-Delta Dental companies that are in our portfolio, you know, they have interns as well. So the opportunity is there. I know we're talking, I think internally, and, and I think we'll get there of maybe even having somewhat of a rotation for an intern that comes in where they're not necessarily set in legal and spend their, you know, internship here they, or in legal. They may, they may spend some time there. They may move to sales. They may move to IT. They may move to, you know, another company within our, so I think we're trying to develop different opportunities uh, for our internship uh, program. And I just threw out, I just quickly went to your careers page um, and put that into the chat for everyone to check out, see what they have um, careers wise, but I'm, all sh I'm sure you can figure out um, on the internship side as well. Um, when I, as I asked this last question, I will put up the QR code for our uh, guests from Michigan State University, but just any final closing advice or uh, as, as you know, we're pretty much midway through their internships or coming to the end, anything that they can do to leave a mark or just uh, be known. I know we've talked a little bit about this, but, um, you know, as they come to a conclusion of their internship, whether they want an, a, a job there or not, um, what might you see? Last Yesterday, we heard from Joe talk about interviewing, and he said, even if you decline an offer, um, always leave with a friend. Um, any suggestions that you have in that vein of whether they want the job or don't, or where, you know, careers can take crazy turns to always yeah, leave on a high note. I, I would definitely say, you know, never burn a bridge. And, and which, which is which is hard to do, right, as a, as a 23 year old. But I think, I think even, even the, the, the thank yous that, you know, whether it's email or whether it's a card, whether, you know, kind of just leaving that like last impression with somebody I think is important. Right. I, I, I again, I think also look, you know, look for and, and understand the conversations you have with people. You know, I, I think for me, my lasting impression that I try to leave on, on, on the younger, I guess, generation is like, if, I have a, a vested interest in your career because I know at the end of the day, if you're successful, my organization is going to be successful. So whether you take an internship or you don't, you know, again, I, don't burn a bridge, keep the conversation, keep the relationship open. Um, you know, I think people kind of have this attitude of, well, yeah, if I don't take the job, maybe they don't, they, they, they won't care. It'll, it'll be over. But I, I think keep that door open, you know, whether it's even just a drop a quick note. I love to get you know, email or text from, from, and I still do from interns that I've had or that I've, that I've helped place in the past. Um, so I would just say, always keep the relationships open. Don't burn any bridges, um, you know, cause you never know where your career is going to come, 
back around full circle or or what opportunities will come come down your path. So um, and and I think mostly people in my position and other in hiring positions like they, they truly you know have have a desire to help people and 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 I and I think you know again take advantage of that um, I, you know we're, we're here for you right we we gotta we gotta have the next generation of leaders. You know, one of the biggest things that I deal with is succession planning. I got to figure out who's going to sit in all the seats here as as we continue to to age out and, and move forward. And I want to understand, you know, you know what's out there and and who's going to fill our roles. So, um, and and I'm 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 excited. You know, based on again the people that I've talked to and interns here and and elsewhere, I'm excited for kind of what the future has to hold for our organization and kind of what's happening in 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 kind of the the work world out there. Well, as always, I really appreciate your time today and your, your support of our program, but also just your insight and expertise. Uh, I know we always gain so much insight on t into Delta Dental, but also just in general, the, the business world and, and appreciate you hosting this session with me. Um, everyone, please, in the chat, give Goran Jerkovic, the CEO, President and CEO of Delta Dental of Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana, a huge thank you. Uh, and as he said, it, this is a perfect opportunity for you to follow up with a note. Um, a lot of our uh, speakers have LinkedIn profiles that you we have created links directly to in our digital handbook, utilize those, send notes with a specific, um, something specific that they said that you connected with, uh, for example, but always great to reconnect and uh, after these sessions and create that a little bit more of a bond with our speakers. We highly encourage that. And again, I just want to reiterate that today we have our second in-person event. We are having our social hour from five to seven at the Skip in downtown Detroit. So if you are down there already or just looking for an opportunity to get down there, we encourage you to join us today. If, um, if so, or if not, next week, we will also have an in-person event. It is our final event of the summer. It is our Link in the D program. Uh, it's all networking. It is run in conjunction with Michigan State University, as well as Engineering Society of Detroit, um, and of course, virtual intern experience. So saying all that, we have a, a huge array of companies that will be there to network directly with you. So again, ending the summer on a high note with lots of opportunities to network, connect, and uh, create opportunities for the future. So thank you again, Gorn. Uh, I, I look forward to our conversation again next year. Uh, hopefully we're a little bit more in person, uh, but nonetheless, we appreciate it and hope you have a great rest of your summer. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. We'll talk to everyone. Hopefully I'll see everyone later today. Um, regardless, we'll be back at 11 a.m. tomorrow with uh, a full panel from One Magnify, who is talking about learning on the job. So see you later, everyone.